Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Biology Reader. Today in this session we will talk over one of the most important topic in bacteriology that is growth curve of bacteria. So friends, let's get started. Friends, how can you define growth? Generally in terms of biology, growth can be defined as an increase in cell mass or cell number of the living organisms. But in case of bacteria, growth merely refers to the logarithmic increase in the cell number not the cell size. Bacteria commonly reproduce through binary fission. Let us take a quick overview on the process of binary fission. In this first a bacterium, it means a single bacterial cell will first replicate its DNA. Then the DNA move towards the corner of the cell and eventually a formation of transverse septa occurs that breaks the cell into two identical daughter cells. Therefore, we can conclude that the growth of bacteria is exponential or logarithmic, which means one cell multiply to give two cells, then the two cells multiply to give four cells and so on. Let us study the scheme of cell division in bacteria. Bacteria follow a specific growth pattern if the conditions like temperature, pH, nutrient availability, etc. are favorable to them. Primarily, Bacteria need a suitable culture medium. They utilize the nutrients incorporated in the medium to undergo cell division. The nutritional factors are basically nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, sulfur and other trace elements in the nutrient medium. The cell division in bacteria is in a logarithmic pattern where we could see the exponential increase in the cell number like the way shown in the picture. Third factor is the time interval we can only see the distinct growth phases if the bacteria are incubated at different time intervals. It is frequently asked that what is the standard growth curve of bacteria. So friends, let us discuss the process of obtaining standard bacterial growth curve, how the graph is plotted and how the graph looks like. Friends, first you need to take a sample of bacteria and then you need to culture it in a fresh or sterile nutrient broth after inoculation, you need to incubate the bacterial culture at the different time intervals. After incubation, you have to note down the optical density of the different bacterial suspension that were incubated at the different time intervals by using spectrophotometer. And by doing so, we can study the dynamics of the bacterial growth. Friends, there may be a question in your mind that what is optical density and how can we study the bacterial growth through this? So, I am having a simple answer to this. Friends, we all know that the light is fully transmitted through a clear solution, right? But if we pass the light through turbid solution, some of the light will be absorbed by the suspension and some of it will be transmitted. Therefore, turbidity is the major factor through which we can know the optical density of the bacterial suspension. And optical density can be defined as the amount of light absorbed by the bacterial suspension. Higher the degree of turbidity, more will be the number of bacteria or bacterial cells. By noting down the reading of the cell count at different time intervals, we can easily prepare a standard growth curve of bacteria as you can see in the diagram. Here you can see the graph is non-linear or non-uniform. So we can conclude that the growth of bacteria is logarithmic, not arithmetic, where the graph obtained is linear and uniform. Now we will discuss each of the growth phases in bacteria. The initial phase of bacterial growth is called lag phase. Friends, we need to keep in mind that here the cells neither show any metabolic activity nor they undergo cell division. Here the cells only adjust themselves into the new environment like the way we take some time to adjust in the new city with the new people. Likewise, when we are providing them an artificial nutrient medium, Bacterial cells also take some time to adapt themselves into the nutrient sources and the pH of the growth medium. This phase is characterized by the slight increase in cell size. And here the bacteria release some enzymes and metabolites before going into the next phase. And in the standard growth curve of bacteria, the lag phase is represented in this way. Logarithmic phase or log phase is the second growth phase of bacteria which is characterized by the cell doubling or exponential increase in the cell number 
as well as cell size here in the graph the increase in cell number is represented in this way the cells in the log phase show intense metabolic activity and they tend to utilize as much as nutrients available in the growth medium here the bacterial cells produce primary metabolites that results in a rapid increase in the growth rate of bacteria then stationary phase is the stagnant growth phase of bacteria in which the population size is in the equilibrium state which means the number of cells produced will be equal to the number of cells dying therefore during the stationary phase there will be no increase in cell number or cell mass it is due to the limited nutrients low oxygen accumulation of toxic waste and an acidic ph of the growth medium in the standard growth curve of bacteria the stationary phase is represented by a straight line death phase is the decline growth phase of bacteria in which the number of dead cells increase because of the nutrient scarcity in the medium and the accumulation of toxic waste that are released during the stationary phase let us end up this video by discussing some key facts in the growth phase of bacteria we have already discussed that the cells in the lag phase prepare themselves to the new growth medium and that is the reason it is also called preparatory phase or adjustment phase here the cells release some enzymes to solubilize the nutrients in the artificial growth medium then the cells in the log phase utilize the soluble nutrients and show intense metabolic activity by releasing some primary metabolites that results in cell doubling here the cells undergo rapid cell division and the number of viable cells is greater than the number of dead cells in the stationary phase the cell division slows down due to the low nutrients availability as a result of which the cell starts releasing some secondary metabolites under such stressful conditions here the number of viable cells is equal to the number of dead cells it is also important to note that the process like sporulation also occurs in some bacteria like bacillus subtilis death phase is resulted by the accumulation of toxic waste that results in increase in the number of dead cells so friends this is all for today and to study this topic in detail you may visit our official website that is biologyreader.com link is provided in the description box so friends if you find this lesson helpful do like comment share subscribe my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon and stay tuned for more videos